What's up y'all? Welcome back to the channel. The Green Wolf is back. I retrieved him from Virginia and I'm back to talk about Kelsey Ballerini and her new album Subject to Change. Kelsey Ballerini has always existed firmly in the pop country lane. Something she's never apologized for. She's always said, hey, I like making pop and I like making country. Although ahead of this new album Subject to Change, she was teasing that it was going to be her countryest album ever. It's different than anything I've ever done and it is heavily influenced by I would say 90s music in general, but definitely 90s female country. That got me excited because I am one of those crazy people that loves the sound of country music. How dare you? I like a fiddle. I like a steel guitar. I enjoy a humorous lyric more than I enjoy a big poppy beat. Although, as the Snapchat guy, that's how a lot of people know me, and every time I cover one of the big pop country girls, I always get a bunch of people that aren't familiar with my perspective, I really am not a blanket pop country hater. I am a hater of derivative music. I think a lot of times that's how pop country feels to me. And I think music that is built around a beat, it really isn't as focused on telling a great story most of the time. But despite the fact that I'm not a fan of Kelsey Ballerini songs like Bragger or Hey Boy or Miss Me More, I've always found her to be a way cut above songwriter and a very charming performer. And I've liked a bunch of her music from Peter Pan to I Hate Love Songs, Love Me Like a Girl, Love and Hate, even Homecoming Queen. Yeah, I think she's got a bunch of good songs. And so I can compartmentalize my feelings of like choreography and Nashville overproduction and sparkles. You can do it too and just sort of see her art. But yes, I was selfishly quite excited to hear what was going to be her countryest album ever. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Before we get into it, I do wanna say that the uh, jigsaw puzzle that I made last year that has kind of this scene of all these country stars and a big Texas bar, that's back. It's on pre-order right now for this week. So you can go to a link in the description to pre-order it. It'll ship probably early November, so more than enough time for the holidays if you want a good gift for a country music fan in your life. It's a 513 piece puzzle. It has a fold out poster of the actual image that's in here. Um, that'll make it a lot easier to do as well as like a little checklist of the people that are in it. Um, and then obviously, you know, the puzzle itself. So that is up for pre-order right now. A ton of people loved it last year, but uh, get in on the pre-order because I can't afford to buy like a crazy amount of stock um, just to have on hand because these are expensive to produce, but yeah, it's at gradysmithshop.com right now. So is this Kelsey Ballerini's countryest album ever? Yeah, for sure it is. There are five songs that you could almost call into a super country EP that are throughout this album. I can't help myself. If you go down, I'm going down to you're drunk, go home what I have, and love is a cowboy. Those at different times reminded me of Shania Twain, they reminded me of Faith Hill, gave me some Suds in the Bucket vibes, even a little bit of Shadaisy. We all got a little junk in the trunk. Those are absolutely my favorite songs to listen to on the album. They're surprisingly country. A lot of them are surprisingly funny. She really lets loose on those songs and the songwriting is interesting. On I Can't Help Myself, you could swear for a second you are listening to Shania. <laughs> The song also kind of gives me the vibe of The Way You Love Me by Faith Hill. As do some of the visualizers where she's in front of flowers and you feel like you're in the This Kiss video. And I really love all the visuals that they've released of this album. The album shoot is really cool. Look how much more interesting this promo shot is than your standard kind of grayish white background country promo shot. The blue and yellow motif is really cool. Just in general, a plus to the visuals. Kelsey very much kind of makes that a priority in her releases. On If You Go Down, I'm Going Down Too. You can hear mandolin, dobro, fiddle on that song. And it's just sort of like a girl friendship anthem, almost like a cheeky take on Thelma and Louise. I've got dirt on you, you've got dirt on me, and if I go down, you're going down too. I absolutely love that song. I think it is a smash. The other really fun and really country one is You're Drunk, Go Home, which is a collaboration with Carly Pierce and Kelly Clarkson. You're drunk, go home, if you're trying to hook up. This song is a funny tell-off of a guy at a bar that's just 
coming on too strong. And that's because he's drunk. And they're just being like, go home. We're just going to party with our girls tonight. There's a couple great lines in this. I really like when she said, I'm down to talk dirty, but you started talking dirty too soon. And I like when she says, yeah, I know you're a Virgo. That's the third time you've told me. Very playful, very cool. I don't think you get any of the big vocal moments that you might expect from kind of one of these super collabs, but it's just like a fun bar song. Love is a Cowboy and What I Have are the two big kind of country or ballads. On Love is a Cowboy, she's personifying love as as this sort of hard to chase down character of a cowboy. It's a lot more atmospheric, a little more Ingrid Andresy in that way, and you got the steel. It's a very pretty song. Love is a cowboy. Mm -hmm. What I have, meanwhile, is just sort of a gratitude ballad. Doing all right, right where I'm at about her taking stock of her life and reflecting that things aren't so bad. It's like if you cross Darius Rucker's All Right with Who I Am by Jessica Andrews. And I really do mean it on the Darius Rucker front because although I do like this song, these words are almost literally the chorus of All Right. Cause I got a roof over my head Cause I got a roof over my head I got a warm body in bed The woman I love lady. I'm doing all right. And it's all right. All right. The other weird factor maybe with what I have and a couple other moments on the album is just that Kelsey has since announced a divorce from her husband of five years, Morgan Evans. And so some lyrics you're like, that's kind of awkward. And I wonder how they will kind of be played live. But I find it to be a very hypnotic and infectious melody. In general, those parts of the album reminded me almost of the Kane Brown album where you're like, huh? This is a lot countryer than I would have thought. The rest of the album feels a lot more like what we have come to expect from Kelsey Ballerini. Very sonically pop country or just straight up pop songs. Some of these are more successful than others. I would argue that a lot of the tracks, almost like Weather, the lead single Heart First, even the title track Subject to Change can feel a little bit Disney Channel-ish. I would say Muscle Memory is probably the most successful pop moment on the album. Something I can't control it almost reminds me of Marin Morris's 80s Mercedes. It definitely has a kind of sauntering vibe to it as she's just slipping right back into her physical attraction to this guy that she sees at a bar. My least favorite pop moment comes right after it. It's called, I guess they call it Fallen. I guess they call it Fallen cause you end up on the ground. You can't live forever. I just think it's like an overproduced monstrosity. It's one of those songs with like six writers on it. And it definitely is kind of going for that sort of Lower East Side, Taylor Swiftian, reverby kind of pop sound, but I just think it's an ugly melody. I don't like the choppiness of how it's delivered, just not for me. In fact, if I could do an edit of the album, I would just literally cut out from, I guess they call it Fallen, through Heart First. I'd just get rid of those five songs and have a tighter 10. Because in that middle part of the album, I feel like the writing is very sort of pat. It, everything's like a little too neatly packaged on a song like Weather or Walk in the Park. These sort of clean, self-contained songs that are all about sort of tree and park references. Always looking for green or grass on a carousel that goes too fast. Or weather illusions comparing it to their relationship. I'm so tired of your weather. Stormy wind play together. I actually like Kelsey when she's a bit more undignified. Because I've seen in her old albums, she's really willing to kind of explore her own insecurities, her own sort of propensity to be a little bit fake on songs like Overshare. I showed Instagrams of my dog, aired all of my laundry, now I'm just the girl that I share on LA. I've got some famous friends that I could call, but I don't know if I'm cool enough. She really kind of can hone in on these stranger feelings, and sometimes those ones just feel, yeah, a little too packaged. A great example of undignified Kelsey is one of the poppiest songs on the record called Doing My Best. 2020 was a weird year. Album dropped at a weird time. I really like this song. I think it is super interesting, very honest, very weird. She talks about 2020 being a hard year, her album not doing exactly what she wanted it to do because it came out right at the beginning of the pandemic. She references some kind of fallout that has happened with Halsey, who was on her last album on that song, The Other Girl. I was friends with a pop star. I put him on track four, but wish I could take it back. I would have never asked if I knew we wouldn't talk anymore. There's a whole part about her getting her ass kicked by Twitter after saying something wrong. I don't know if that was something to do with Morgan or if that was something to do with like, 
You know, when everyone was mad at Chase Rice about the pandemic, maybe she did that. I don't know what it is, but she's just saying, like, not everything has been going well for me. But yeah, I like seeing that side of Kelsey. It's very vulnerable. And I'd love to see her explore more of that, maybe like a bit darker of a side, occasional villain energy in her music or something. But I do think she's a very unique writer. I think especially in what a feminine style she really has as a writer. There are just a few lines throughout this record that you're not going to hear on any other kind of standard country tailgate tune. Like I love on I Can't Help Myself when she says, I could go for a walk or maybe get a salad. Like I really don't think I've heard salad in a country song before, but it's just kind of like proudly white girl basic of her. And I really genuinely mean that as a compliment. Like it's cool to hear someone sing about wanting to eat a salad. I love that little moment on what I have where she says, I bought the shoes where the bottom is red but who the hell am I trying to impress? She's got a hyper femininity to the way that she writes, so much so that she solo wrote a whole song about Marilyn Monroe on this album called Marilyn. And it includes a showstopper of her lyric, curves didn't keep you from your skeletons. I mean, that's so cool. Like her literal body couldn't keep her from her emotional skeletons and the drug use and all the stuff that made Marilyn Monroe's life tragic. What a line. So yeah, I like some of the weirder moments on this album. Other times, like on Subject to Change, even on Walk in the Park, I feel like she engages a little bit too much in trying to package herself as an erratic person that sometimes is over here and sometimes is over here. Whereas I think that already comes through in the t kind of like sonic diversity and subject diversity of her music. I definitely think the album drags a bit in the middle. I definitely wish it were even more country. Like you could even kind of countrify up the little things a little bit more. Although that song still has kind of grown on me and I still love the video. And I imagine the next singles will be Muscle Memory. I would love to see if you go down, I'm going down too. Um, and then I think What I Have would close out the album. But yeah. I'm just kind of like, I like this album and I continue to think Kelsey is pretty damn interesting. So yeah, there you go. There are my thoughts on subject to change. Find you a YouTuber that's going to do a video on Co Wetzel back to back with Kelsey Ballerini. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts on subject to change down below. You can pre-order the puzzle down below. All my links to everything are down there. Yeah, just give me your thoughts. You know the drill. I'll see you soon with more content. Goodbye guys and say hi to Wolfie.